Hello guys, welcome to the Train Parrot. Bitcoin is so close to putting an all-time high, but today we have the Spot Ethereum ETF coming out live, and I got a bunch of news and technical aspects that I want to share with you because I believe are gonna surprise more than one investor out there. Guys, if this is the type of content that you like to watch, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of these videos. And if you feel like supporting the channel, watch this video until the very end and do not go anywhere without leaving a comment down below. Those two things are really helping the channel to continue growing. Thanks so much. And it's been a crazy weekend with prices breaking above 68K. For the month, we are around 8% up, reverting the damage made during the month of June. Looking at the big picture here on the monthly, this looks still like a bullish flag that has just managed to trap lows of shorts, making a massive case for the price to go to the highs, get all of them liquidated and ignite a huge short squeeze that could push the price to those new all-time highs. But recently we have two waves of deposits, pretty massive, that in my opinion, haven't sold at market prices yet. And yes, the big well explorer is pointing down, meaning that currently there must be some withdrawals as well, pushing the ratio back into the average, but still far away from one, which is the equilibrium. And in the past days, I continue to see exchange inflows, very substantial ones. For example, this one yesterday with 350 million, followed by 82 million, 96 million, and today we have 96 million followed by 378 million. This last one is flagged as 90% belonging to empty Gox. And today's continue with massive inflows. Right after the empty Gox one, we have this one with 300 million. We're getting very close to almost 1 billion in deposits for a single day. Looking at some tweets, we got Ki Yong Yu saying, if you're selling Bitcoin now, you likely haven't held it for over three years. And that's because veteran holders aren't selling. Bull market investors, holders of six months to two years, sold most of their VTC as approach its all-time highs, including myself. Bear market investors, holders of over two years, sold about 67% of their holdings within the recent prices. But veteran investors, those ones that have been holding for over three years, experiencing multiple cycles, are showing all-time highs in UTXO supply across all band ages. UTXO is unspent transactions, meaning that they haven't sold. We also have this very interesting thread from Willy Wu explaining that there are five macro signals that he's looking very closely. Starting with the minor capitulation potentially over, he points out that the, the hash ribbons is starting to flip. Hash ribbons is one of the strongest signal ever seen across all the cycles of Bitcoin. Incredible performance, in fact. If we look at the hash ribbons official indicator on TradingView, we can see that after being extremely wide open the two MAs of the indicator, we're back into pointing towards a bullish cross. We're still far from getting that bull cross like we had one in June and then it was a fake out. And that's why still we haven't seen the buy signal. He also points at the Pule multiple measures, miners relative profit to past revenues, telling us we are in a level two here. And that happens when a signal bottom, when BTC halving cuts miner earnings by 50%. And this typically leads to the proper bull run. You can see number two happening on every cycle once the bull run starts. Miners are expecting to make better money from here, one of the most bullish signals is the actual global liquidity trending up. This means literally that people should get more money in their pockets to spend across the globe. And this is mostly to do with monetary policies changes. Like for example, a couple of days ago, so a 0.25% rate cut on China. China is a massive economy, so we have to expect that these changes are not just going to influence the macroeconomy by itself, but also is going to create potentially a snowball effect of more countries 
following with the same action. And as for bearish signals, we are seeing a build-up in coins entering spot exchanges. Of note is the 50,000 BTC from empty Gox being sent to Kraken, and that's seemingly being front-run by others sending their coins in as well. So this is the one that we've been focusing the most recently, seeing the price getting so close to an all-time high again, seeing large wells dropping the towel. It's a little bit spooky in my opinion. It doesn't mean that we cannot put another all-time high, but why are they so keen on preparing to sell so close to an all-time high? We should be seeing actually the opposite. And he also points out the Ethereum ETF going live, something potentially a little bit bearish for Bitcoin. We don't know how many people are going to rotate their assets from the BTC to the Ethereum spot ETF when it goes live. And in my opinion as well, Ethereum being bullish calls out investors to spend some of their funds in all coins just because historically when Ethereum runs, all coins very shortly run after. All of this might tell investors that maybe it's a better opportunity to be in all coins and on Ethereum at this stage. You can see here all the Ethereum ETFs that are expected to go live at 9.30, including the Grayscale Ethereum Mini Trust. And as they go live, we can also see Grayscale transferring 1 billion to Coinbase Prime. So there seems to be now a division between the perception of investors when it comes to Ethereum. On one hand, we have all these deposits of 1 billion of Ethereum from Grayscale. And I remind you that when the BTC spot ETF went live on Bitcoin, there was a rotation from Grayscale into the actual spot Bitcoin ETFs. And that rotation was something that caused a lot of pain in the market. The selling pressure from Grayscale was huge and the inflows into the BTC spot ETFs was not outpacing them, causing the price to go lower. So many investors with that experience at hand expect that once the Ethereum ETF goes live, we might see some lower prices before the actual bullish moves thanks to the buying pressure of the spot ETFs. You can see that BlackRock has already updated their website, so the ETF seems to be almost live by now. They even drop a video for investors to learn more about this new product. But still many investors are taking today's prices with caution just because we are seeing 2.85 billion, people mentioning even 5 billion. They seem to be consolidating everything into a single wallet with a huge amount of Bitcoin. And as we approach the 20 billion mark on open interest, once again, we start seeing a bit of exhaustion at these prices. Interestingly, after the full weekend, we still haven't consumed all the liquidity that we talk about on Friday that we have here. On the four hour, we don't have anything as substantial as what we have here on the ceiling. And I suspect that once we consume this, there is a strong argument telling us that we might go for the bananas zone where we have a huge, huge amount of liquidity to trigger a short squeeze, which could take us very quickly to the high 70s, if not the 80K mark. The only thing that is currently scaring investors is the payments of empty gox. So there's a lot of people trying to calculate how low can that take the price if all creditors were to be paid at once and decided to sell. Let's go into the technicals. Let's look into the daily, the four hour, and I'm also going to cover the weekly because there are huge developments on the weekly. Events that we've been waiting for months to happen are just happening right now. So make sure that you pay attention to that part of the video as well. So let's start with the daily. You can see here that we have the point of control, which is this red line. This symbolizes the area of more volume traded and is perceived by investors as the line in the sand to tell us we are in the bullish area of the ranch or in the bearish area of the ranch. You can see that we have managed to be two days above it, tested as new support. And today the bulls are still ongoing with a massive battle to stay above the point of control to keep all this move still bullish. I will suspect that if we lose that level and we test it as resistance, there could be an aggressive move to take some of the lows once again. If you focus on every time that we saw a rejection on the point of control, 
or every time that we manage to stay above it, we usually have an impulsive move to the upside or we have a sell-off from that level. For example, in here we had a 20% to the downside from there and in here we have a 16% to the downside. So if we were to lose this level and we did something like a 16, we will go and revisit 56. If we did a 20%, we will go to 53. So this is a decisive moment with a big potential if we hold it to take the highs, but also if we lost it, I will expect a big move as well. If we look at the daily RSI, we can see that we are very decently holding this dotted yellow trend line. Although the most bullish impulsive move was around here, since then we've been just kind of going sideways, doing some highs in the price, but nothing really significant in terms of momentum compared to what we did before. So I will expect a test of 60, which is currently our support. But if we started putting lows in terms of the RSI, it's very likely that we are going to see this trend line broken and potentially that wipe of the lows. Still, the trend is your friend, so we are still continuing with this move to the upside. But my focus now on the daily is to see that exhaustion to start playing out eventually. And on the four hour, we can see that even from Wednesday, we were already exhausted and we lost the white trend line of support. We have a small breakout here that was bullish that we call out on Friday. Since then, the price managed to get to 68K, but you can see that it did that put in lower highs, meaning that currently the four hour has lost momentum. There's a potential here to break above this dotted trend line and push towards the highs at 63 but it's important to stay level-headed with the four hour because we can see how it's curving down in here as it's approaching the first level of resistance located at 70.4. Very important to see what happens if the price came back into the CPR levels. We were playing around the CPR levels, we broke above it, so there could be some retest here at 65K. Ideally, what we want to see is immediately to put a high, to have no doubt that the trend is not exhausted and that we are going to go for the higher prices to punish all those shorts. But entering too deep into the pivots and potentially putting them as resistance is the perfect equation to build this head and shoulders here and then go once again back into the lows. And we still have from the weekend of the 15th of July, a massive CME gap, which everybody forgot about. People tend to think that they expire, but going back in time, some CME gaps that stay open for quite a long time, they get taken later on. Everything is possible. We just need to see how the price reacts in these areas to start telling us that something moves from just possible and low likely into something very high likely. You can see how the price has managed to go above the bull market support band. It hasn't tested it as new support, but we are right there. And I think what determines the bullishness, the real bullishness of this, is if we were to break above the megaphone pattern and of course continue to the upside. Anything in this area, anything even above the bull market support band, but below the breakout area of the megaphone pattern can be easily sold out and put a new low. Today, for me, the most critical thing to pay attention is whether we close below 67. As I mentioned, that's point of control is supporting resistance. And to me, it's very clear that a daily close below that signals that we are going to put more significant lows compared to this. At the very least, a 65K. General markets continue to see a loss in momentum and DX leads the pack here. It was the first one to lose the momentum. S&P is starting to lose that momentum, it has clearly broken below the trend line and starting to find resistance in here at 5.5. And VIX, as we were expecting, had a big breakout to a level of 17, very similar to what we saw before, which was the argument that we were using to think that around these levels, we should expect to see breakout. Now, this breakout that we are seeing here is not as significant as what we see, obviously, in COVID, but you can see that we continue in this trajectory of compressing and compressing more the VIX. Once we actually break out, but not just a local breakout like we are seeing here, but we break out above 
this trend line more or less located at 18, we could see big events in the macroeconomy. So to end the video, we're going to look at the weekly. This is probably the most important part of the video. This is going to tell us what's next in the market, not just for the day, not just for the hours, but actually even for the next months to come. And we've been focusing on this all the bull market. We observed this falling wedge and we waited until this broke out in January 2023. That was one of the most bullish things that told us that all of this was going to happen. We touched this as support and on the 17th of June, we lost this support in here. We say that at level 40 was the line in the sand to go into a bear market. We dodged the bullet and we closed on Sunday back above within the bull market support. And what's going on right now? We have this candle that is currently live moving, pointing down and testing the support of the bull market. That support is located at 59. Losing 59 means that we are back to losing the support and putting even more doubts on how long can this survive. Holding 59 is already very bullish, but there's something that could be even more bullish than that which is after retesting this, a breakout towards the 70s and even higher than 70, an impulsive move like this will be extremely bullish for the weeks to come. That will mean that we not only dodge the bullet here, and this was just a liquidity graph, the last trick to trap more bears at the worst time ever, just to do a massive impulsive move to get us into new all-time highs. So let's inspect all these levels, starting with the 59, which is our current support. Then what would it mean a move into the 70s from where we are? I'm also going to look what's the corresponding price of an RSI of 45, because that's the new low that we have right now. And obviously, wherever we go here lower, even if we break down, which is bearish, the last thing that we want to see is RSI putting a low relative to this 45. Let's say we go into 43 or even into 38. That will be horrible for the market. So let's quickly put those levels. We say anywhere below 45 means putting a new low and that is really bearish. And 59 is our current support. And let's say we made an impulsive move to somewhere around 70. Now let's focus on the price to see where is all of that. So that coincides with my vision that we need to hold right now 67k or at least before next Sunday, we must be above 67K. We can come back here and even take all the liquidity up until 60 or even lower, but by next Sunday, we need to come back to 67 and close above that. That will make look this RSI beautiful, ready for an explosion into new all-time highs. The 45 level right now is located at 55. So we are allowed to take liquidity up to 55K, but then we need to go back by the end of the week into above of 67. And if we achieve that as, as a reward, we get the sky. We have 81K located at an RSI of 70, which in my opinion, just by looking at these impulsive moves that we have here, this doesn't look disproportionate. I think is as bullish as this move that we have just a few days ago where we moved almost 15 points going to 70 is barely a move of 11 points in the RSI. So we can even go higher just by repeating the same energy that we already used a few days ago. And the stochastic RSI had the cross and now is fully above the 20s, which is really bullish again. The fear and greed index is above 71. As we discussed earlier in the video, people are realizing profits. We talk about the holders that have been holding for less time selling and the veterans that have been many cycles to continue to hold. And a very quick look at the liquidity, just to see where we are standing. Most liquidity is the selling pressure from 70 to 72. On fire charts, we can see the order book on trading light, how this is holding the price here with liquidity of 600, which is not that much. The selling pressure comes with barely 300 in here and they remove the 1.1K that they had at 72K. So that is gone and all that's left is 400 at 72k so this is the live order book and this looks at first sight very bullish because it means that we don't have much resistance to the top if the 
price was to do a bullish move today. I don't know if this is just tricking us as investors to make us believe that this is coming so people start buying here and then they rack pull on you. Very difficult to tell, but at least you know what's going on in real time in the order book now. On high block capital, we left loads of liquidity right about 68. We have the liquidity that we never took on the low 50s. But yeah, here is the recipe for that short squeeze that can take us into 80. We also can see it here in the yearly chart. And we have 361 on the delta. And on the monthly, the stochastic RSI is curving up to potentially prevent the holocaust in a cycle, which is to end up with the stochastic RSI below 20. On the monthly, we are not allowed to do that. You can go as low as even below 50s, but then you have to do a bullish cross and recover back above 80 to retain that bull market. Otherwise, the bull market is just gone. In history, we never survive once we reach below 20 in the stochastic RSI in the monthly. You can be like as bullish as 2017 on the top end, or you can have a fake out that even COVID couldn't get us below 20. We have a bullish cross here, and then finally we made it to the first all-time high of that cycle. Being on 20, not allowed. So this is a good signal to see the blue line attempting to do a bullish cross for a potential reversal and lifesaver move for this bull market to continue. Guys, I'm currently hosting an event on Bybit, 500 position airdrop. All the instructions are in a link in the description. And not just that, because if you use my referral on Bybit, you can get up to 30,000 in rewards. And once you have a Bybit account, Using my referral, you can get 70% discount on any of my memberships on the Trading Parrot website, which is going to give you loads of value with indicators to navigate this market and hundreds of tools that you can use to automate your trading with trading bots and strategies. I have written over a hundred different advanced premium tools. In order to get that 70% discount with Bybit, you have to join my Discord server and write down the Bybit UID of your account. If you already have a Bybit account, you can migrate your account and you can use a president's digital card to trade with Bybit all across the globe, which is fantastic. I left all those instructions in my Discord server. Make sure that you join the Discord server. There's a strong community. You can reach out to me as well via the Discord server. I'll see you there. Thanks so much for watching this video. Sorry I didn't manage to put any video over the weekend. I have family visiting. Do not go anywhere without leaving a comment down below. Remember to like the video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.